We're in Landau for the EV only track day. As you can see, there's some amazing electric cars here today. Uh, Vindus Group have uh, lent me the RS e-tron Audi. So thank you very much to them today. And uh, we've only driven it down. We're not racing today, unfortunately. Hey, listen up everyone. I'm extremely sad. <sighs> But maybe when the TDR wedge E conversion is done, we'll uh, get on track a little bit more. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get some footage today, get a few interviews in and uh, enjoy the event. When the sun goes down and your eyes cannot see When the sun goes down and your hearts cannot reach When your bones feel like breaking and your heart cannot take Track day has started. There's some pretty spunky cars out there at the moment. Got a couple of Porsches, a couple of uh, Teslas. Here they come. Oh, yes. He's giving it some. Yeah, they're giving it all the beans. So quiet, though, isn't it? <laughs> so we're just with Joe and uh, just doing a bit of a wheel change on this uh, Tesla Model 3 performance. Um, there's a few modifications on the car as you can see. Joe, can you tell us what modifications you've done in the car? Yeah, absolutely. So as you've said about the wheels and tyres, this is running uh, Cup 2 Connect. So they're Michelin's kind of track oriented but still road tyre. Um, they have sensors embedded in the tyre that provide live feedback um, to the driver on temperatures and oh, pressures. Wow. Um, so you get really good feedback of how your tyres are performing, if they're cold, if they're warm, you know, if you need to let pressure in or out, and they okay. actually tells you what to do. Yep. So they're, they're really good for a, you know, I would still count myself as a novice track driver. Right. They're really good for that because they teach you how to look after the tyres quite well. Okay. The wheels are just some off-the-shelf judd units that are a little bit lighter than the Tesla stock wheels. Yep. Um, but the important changes down this end really are the anti-roll bars and the drop links. Yep. Um, so running through the car between the two wheels, something that controls the roll is the anti-roll bars. Yeah. The Tesla items are, even on the performance car, thin and will bend a bit. Right. The bars that I've put in here are from TiVo, who've organised the track yep. today. Yeah, from John, yeah. manufactured by Redwood. Um, which is a, a performance parts manufacturer. Okay. Um, and are they, they are where are they based? Are I think they... they're in the USA. Right? Okay. But John imports and, and is the distributor. So it has um, anti roll bars that run through and then drop links between the suspension struts and the anti roll bars. Yeah, no, well. I saw the drop links when the uh, the wheels yeah, were off. He doesn't have a shiny part, right? So yeah, we love a shiny that, part, um, don't we? You get that really instantaneous um, turn in. Yeah. There's, there's absolutely no slack in the steering at all. But the Tesla Model 3 has quite a sharp turn in anyway as stock. Yeah. Um, but this just sucks up any last little bit of play from the steering so when you turn in the car does exactly what you're expecting it to do. and uh, what's have you got any plans next for the car have you got any yeah, kind of so other I modifications the next thing that i'll need to do is add some camber adjustment yep so on the stock suspension this is stock apart from it's been lowered so it's only got different springs on right um what sort of springs are they on the eye back eye back springs, springs. springs. Do you, how much did it lower uh, it by about 25 to 30 mil okay across the whole car yeah they don't change the camber or the caster or no. the toe. So one of the things that I've noticed is that this car needs a bit of negative camber on the track because right. it leans so heavily on the shoulders because of the weight of it. So I'm going to look at next some camber control arms to help me just dial in some negative camber yeah. to help the tyres grip and help them last a bit longer yeah. on track days as well. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the uh, the last couple of episodes that I've done, which I mentioned earlier, yeah. uh, Clive, he's, he's played around with the uh, the camber, and I know that John from TiVo, as uh, I'm sure we'll look at his car later, the yeah. the, uh, the camber is very different on that as well, just yeah, yeah. to maximise the track. Um, 
Is it? Yeah. Is there anything else you've done for the car? Um, or? So similar on the on the back end. So I've got anti roll bars and drop links on the back. Obviously the wrap, which is purely cosmetic. Well, the wrap looks great, and and Thanks. something that we noticed was the the embossed Tesla yeah. uh, on the bonnet. Yeah, and the uh, it. it's a place called Adept in Cheltenham, and they did a great okay. job, really good job of doing yeah. the wrap for me. No, it looks great, and I think if you don't mind me opening the door, yeah, go for it's it. It's open. The fact that it's black inside, it it looks looks really really smart. Yeah. So if I'd have had a, a different coloured car, like a base car, then I would have needed to have the shuts and returns done. Otherwise, it would have looked wrong. But because it's a black car, when you open the door, you don't really see that as standing out. The black yeah. bodywork hasn't been wrapped. I've just noticed your helmet is uh, yeah. colour coordinated to the car. Yeah, it is. That was something that they did for me. Um, just to oh, look at that. make it stand out. That is cool. Yeah, awesome. No, it's you know it's great great for to meet you know guys like yourself that um, modified not only the exterior, make it uh, look a bit more individual, but also the uh, to make it a bit more track track friendly. Yeah, definitely. Um, They're pretty good on track um, to start with. Oh, I suppose actually I should talk about the first and probably most important mod that I did, which was the brakes. Yeah. Because the one thing that lets these cars down on track the earliest yeah. is the brakes. The stock pads are brie we think as a compound right um, <laughs> camembert yeah camembert. <laughs> and they, they basically boil off very quickly right um, and, and become ineffective after a few that especially if a oh, brake heavy circuit like abingdon right where you're on the brakes a lot yep and um, you get the warnings very early on and then you lose you get a long pedal quite early as well yeah it's nothing more frustrating than uh yeah brake fade exactly. so these one of the, the very first mod i did for this apart from the wrap and the cosmetic stuff was um i put some rb pads in some rb 970 so racing brake pads from the states yep um much much better stopping much better um, at longevity throughout a track day but i went through the pads very quickly because they're they're quite soft right still. um so now i've got some carbotech pads in they're made in the uk and they are lasting much much better they still give that much better braking performance do they warp the discs at all or do no, they so as long as you sort of do normal track day etiquette of when you're you know you're done on your hot laps you do a couple of cooling laps to let everything cool down a little bit yeah then no they're fine okay um Uprated pads, uprated fluid, so I've got some motor racing fluid in there just to help with that heat dissipation and, and not boiling. Yeah. And I think the next change I'll make is probably just some braided lines just to stop yep. that last bit of squeeze in the pedal. Defo, um, yeah. And, and eventually the budget might allow for a big brake kit, who knows. Well, is it you literally use it as a daily as well? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's so it's daily and track day, so it's kind of a, the fast it's a road compromise, compromise yeah. right? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's getting the balance, um, which, uh, yeah. Again, previous episodes, uh, that's what Clive was trying to do, trying to get that kind of balance yeah, right. Exactly. And It works really well at the moment as a road car as well. It's, even though it's been lowered and it's got those stiffer anti-roll bars on, in a straight line, the damping and the handling isn't that much different. You don't right. really notice it. It's only when you then turn into a corner that you feel it's much um, more direct yeah. because of the anti-roll bars. But the, it's not worse over bumps or anything like that. I just have to watch for lower ground clearance on some bigger speed bumps. Yeah, no, cool. Good man, thank you very much. No problem, nice to meet you. Uh, nice, yeah, nice to meet you and uh, look forward to seeing you go around track. Yeah, me too. Carefully, but speedily. Thank you very much. All right, good man. <laughs> the green machine, it's, what, that's uh, one of the, that's one of the top gear cars, that one. So yeah, the green Porsche is one of the top gear cars. Uh, R Simmons is the liveried uh, Porsche, here he is. RSEV, RS Simmons. Oh, they're all bunching up now. Okay, so we're here at UK's first EV uh, track day with John. Thank you. And uh, yeah, John's uh, set up uh, part of TiVo uh, Solutions, yeah. uh, who do uh, modified parts for Teslas. And uh, he'll tell us a little bit more about that in a second, but this is the first ever EV track day solely for electric cars at uh, Lando. And uh, yeah, John, how did that, how did it all come about? Well, um, I started to take my car on track when I started to develop parts for it. So okay. these are performance parts, obviously needed development testing, uh, that's braking, uh, suspension, that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I, I hadn't done a lot of track days for a while, actually. I did used to do quite a, quite a lot of them back in sort of late 80s, but um, this got me back into them. Right. I started to meet up with a few other um, 
Tesla owners initially, yeah, um, and got them interested in coming out on track. So there, there was a growing group of us, and we just thought, well, it's, it can't be too long before we can have our own track day. But I thought I could make it work with a circuit like Landau. So um, to cut a long story short, I thought I'd just do it myself, and we organised it. Yeah, and I mean, I tell you what, it's been a really successful event, and we've had all sorts of different cars here, uh, whether it's Porsche or you know the Audi, which. I haven't obviously taken this on track today for obvious reasons, lent by Vindus Group, thanks to them. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's been a nice selection of cars and and uh, some that have been modified, some that haven't. And it, it's great that you know you're leading the way and and pushing this because I think this is what this is what the whole country needs. It's what you know the world needs. You know, uh, having some EV track days because this is where it's all going, isn't it? Um, what uh, what's actually been modified on your Model Three? Because um, I could see the exterior mods, you've got some, are they forged wheels on, on this car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. forged wheels, they are our own design, they are very similar to the zero G wheel that Tesla makes, but that wheel is very difficult to get in this country. Right. Um, and actually our wheels are slightly lighter than that and they're stronger. Right, so okay. They're really developed specifically, not specifically for track use, but they're suitable for track use, but they also look good, so. You know, form over function. Apparently, uh, <laughs> the other way around with most of our stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm quite backwards in in most things. Um, so on this uh, fr this front splitter here, what uh, yeah. where's this come come about? Because I've seen a couple of splitters. Is this one of your specific ones? Uh, so we didn't design this. This was actually designed in about 2017 for a Model Three car that was entered into a time attack event. Yeah. In uh, the states. Okay. And uh, when they were testing the car, they actually found that this design coupled with a rear spoiler, not a second and a half off their lap time. Oh, wow. So, again, this is, you know, function more than form, but yeah. it does look good as no, well. No, it looks great. It fits really well. It's really well made. You know, it's, this is hand laid on fibre. Um, it's, it's a real sort of quality part, but it does actually, you know, give you some benefit. And something that uh, was quite easy to notice on your car was the upgraded brake kit. Right. Um, yeah. yeah that's, can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, so the standard, I think a lot of people understand that the standard Model 3 and even the Model 3 performance, uh, if you need to really use the brakes, and you do need to use the brakes on yeah. most tracks, Oh yes. Uh, they're not quite up to the job. They're, they're not bad and they are perfectly adequate, I think, for road use. Uh, but the problem with them is that the discs, the rotors, don't dissipate heat well enough. Yeah. So once you get the heat into them, you can't really get the heat out unless you stop and let the whole thing cool down. But, quite a long time so yeah um, when we took the car on track uh, we'd probably get up to sort of seven eight or nine laps of somewhere like rounds in the circuit and then yeah. we'd get a temperature warning on the car ah it's so hot right now all right start to fade and yeah you know so not what you want not what you want so what we looked at first of all we we did um but we did develop with uh, again a uk company some track pads specifically for the model three performance yeah they work really well and there are two or three cars here today that fit in just with those pads. Yeah. And, and that does help an awful lot, and they'd be, they'd be fine circulating around here with those track pads in and the standard brakes. But I wanted to really take it up to the next level, and uh, I wanted to be sure that if I took this to any track anywhere, that I wouldn't run out of brakes. So what we've developed is um, it's an AP racing uh, kit. Yeah. So again, it's UK made. A lot of the stuff we do is made in the UK. Uh, we want to support British industry. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so this kit specifically fits the Model 3, and yeah. um, you can have either a front uh, brake kit, which are bigger rotors, more efficient rotors, and uh, big six-point calipers. Uh, and you honestly, you can go anywhere with those, and the car will stop, yeah. and it won't ever fade. Um, we have also developed a rear uh, disc upgrade as well. Yes, I did notice that they were very different from the standard ones at the back. Yeah, so again, these are AP racing rotors, yeah. uh, which again have been redesigned specifically to fit this model. Uh, we're using the standard caliper, so uh, on this car we painted it just so it blends in with the rest of the colour scheme. Yep. It uses the standard um, Model 3 rear caliper, uh, and it's just a bigger disc, more efficient disc, and again it means that you're never going to get too hot and run out of brakes. So. And suspension, I'm guessing you've uh, done quite a lot of work with the suspension being one of the main things other than the brakes. So what we did, what we found originally was that actually the um, anti-roll bars are on the standard car. If you upgrade those, you get quite a bit of benefit right. from without doing anything else to it. Uh, and again, you'll find there's a couple of cars here today. Yeah, no, we did see that uh, we managed to get some shots of the, uh, I think it was, was it Joe's car? Yeah, Joe's 
uh, with the front and rear uh, anti roll bar, which, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it makes a hell of a difference there. It makes a hell of a difference with the standard suspension, it does, yeah. I think once you start to upgrade the rest of the suspension, so you, you switch to better coilovers, better dampers, you might not feel as much of a difference if you then put the anti roll bars on. Right. For, for the standard car, it's a really cost effective upgrade. Okay. Um, it kind of transforms it really. So where 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 do we find all these amazing TiVo parts? What's uh, what's their website? Well, TiVo Solutions, TiVo dot Solutions is the web address. That's, that's, that's okay. Where you'll find everything. Um, and you're on all the social media, Instagram, yeah, Facebook. Instagram, Facebook. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, yeah, gonna take me for a couple of laps in it as well. Yeah, we're gonna let you have a, have a little uh, go in it and see what you think. Uh, awesome. Yeah, looking forward to that. But no, thank you for giving us an overview on the car, and uh, yeah, let's take it for a spin. Right. Cool. Brilliant.